so guys it's another mind-blowing moment with mr dele faro to me honestly you know i love listening to him because he's somebody that speaks from his heart he speaks from his heart without any fear or favor listen to him addressing the tribunal apc opposing the broadcast of the presidential election what do you expect and you yourself said you are, you'll be shocked no, let's be yeah. clear truth dies in darkness truth dies in darkness let the legal system prove itself either an accomplice to the ruiners of Nigeria or indeed the last hope of the common man. Bola Ahmed Inubu had won. If Atiku had won, and it was clear that this was the result of the election, they would clap, congratulate them, wish the Nigerian people luck, sit back, probably prepare for another election where Democrats. I would have gone back home and started preparing for another election. But Bola Ahmed Inubu did not win an election. He's attempting to steal one. With the connivance of Yakubu, it is now up to the courts to decide if they are party to that crime. It's not for daily fountain. This is really mind blowing. This is mind blowing. It is now time for our judiciary to tell us if they are an accomplice to this crime or they are the last hope for the common man. We want our judiciary to prove that. Let our judges, let them come clean before the Nigerian people. So guys, I'm going to allow you watch this video. Take your time, relax, watch this video and I know you are going to enjoy it because Mr. Dele is somebody that everybody wants to listen to. He pours it out the way it is in his heart. So guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. INEC and the APC opposing the broadcast of the presidential election. What do you expect? And you yourself said you are, you'll be shocked. No, let's be yeah. clear. Truth dies in darkness. Let me repeat myself. Truth dies in darkness. If you broadcast the tribunal's proceeding, Hynek and the APC and multiple agencies of this fraudulent government will be exposed for what they are. They've done all their shenanigans, had their circuses, had their orchestra. We're now on the home run where <laughs> the tires eat the road. And what you're saying is that INEC, the APC, will do everything they can to make sure Nigerians don't see the truth. Or at least, as best as possible, veil it. If you're seeing it live, it becomes difficult to distract the people with all the many shenanigans they will bring because they will be throwing maximum distractions at the people instead of allowing them to see the evidence that will be coming out of the court. So take it for granted that the APC, INEC, would do everything to fight against it. Whether the tribunal would um, elect to allow itself to become a force for good, or whether it would allow itself to be forced to become complicit in a crime against the Nigerian people is entirely up to it. But even if it rules against allowing cameras, I would not hold that against the tribunal or deem that a sign of its partiality in one way or the other. Because the truth is, it is not something that had been allowed in our courts, but that is not to suggest that it is not desirable. It's done all over the world. Kenya did it. Why should it be such a big deal for us? We, 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 we love pointing out examples all over the world. But that's because we've been left behind by everyone else. But Kenya did it. And they made sure they finished hearing the petitions before any swearing in was done. If we are truly desires of being members of the human community we have to start acting human and humanity says when there are opportunities for progress advance is always about enlightened selfish interest 
it is in our enlightened selfish interest as a people to enlighten ourselves educate ourselves by following the proceedings of that tribunal so it's up to the court to decide whether he wants to do that or not now let's take it from your last statement uh, stating the fact that uh, all petitions should be heard like we've seen in other crimes yeah. before the swearing in yeah. but may 29 is just around the corner and processes are ongoing to ensure that i mean that the program runs uh, goes ahead but nigerians are also skeptical about the supreme court obtaining uh, that election and concerns are also being raised about uh, a vacuum in government and uh, uh, nigerians also kick against the interim national government uh, uh, what are the, what are your concerns uh, number one that those who speak to vacuum are obviously not um, well advised as to the legal position there is no vacuum the constitution provides not for an interim government but that the incumbent i don't know the specific sections as i've always managed to explain to all if you are looking for legal references talk to your lawyers i'm retired but i believe there are sufficient provisions in the constitution as fraudulent as i hold it to be there are sufficient provisions there that allows the incumbent to continue for the period of that interregnum is there so it's not about and i've been hearing this nonsense about interim government we didn't vote for an interim government we voted for a president we have courts for the purposes of resolution of disputes there are disputes clear ones about this election and there are constitutional imperatives that have been overlooked as well and you don't if the constitution is clear you don't start all this dicing left and right but because even though there is a constitution both the drafters of that constitution and the people are miles apart and at the end of the day it is not a reflection of our will so it's easy for those who know that the constitution is meaningless because that's what it actually is to keep trampling all over it the way they are however we are sworn to follow the legal path where that leads we we'll know at the end of the day if they if the legal path in their own interpretation includes swearing in a man who is clearly not the elected president there, there is a constitutional provision for determining the elected president 24 states and 25 percent of fct i didn't write that it is not something that you argue is there clearly 24 state and i read english language and linguistics up to a point even though i didn't graduate and the meaning of hand in law is established so if somebody now sat down mahmoud yakubu sat down in spite of that clear provision of the constitution he writes a certificate of return in the middle of the night and his minion in adamawa did the same thing he went after the one in adamawa but he wants to be covered in glory he tells you there is a problem with the way our country is run but again our own decision at the level of the obidati campaign move, uh, organization from day one was always clear follow the court let the legal system prove itself either an accomplice to the ruiners of nigeria or indeed the last hope of the common man because our very humanity is what is being challenged our right as a collective to make a choice if Bola Ahmed Inubu had won if Atiku had won and it was clear that this was the result of the election they would clap, congratulate them which the Nigerian people lock sit back probably prepare for another election we're democrats and i'm talking i'm speaking for myself i would have gone back home and started preparing for another election but bola Ahmed in Ubu did not win an election he's attempting to steal one with the connivance of yakubu it is now up to the courts to decide 
if they are party to that crime. It's not for deliver out you. Now let's also look at this as the tenth National Assembly also <laughs> we've had jostling for uh, the top let's see you know leadership. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on you see I left Nigeria, I believe it was on the twelfth of April. Yeah, and I came back uh, on Wednesday, just a few days ago. I deliberately, deliberately stayed away from all news Nigeriana until a few days before my return. And when I <laughs> started checking the news, I saw the Senate chief whip, I think, Ojikalu Izabi. I saw Akpabio, and I'm being told uh, uh, what's that one's name now? Barau. Uh, hmm? Barau. Uh -huh. Barau. I've been waiting. Barau. Yes. I thought I just saw a old Jocelyn, and I was saying to myself, "Here we go again. Here we go again," because it's almost like. We take every opportunity to normalize insanity. Every opportunity. We don't seem capable of missing the opportunity to normalize madness. It's bad enough that we have a career criminal poised to take over the presidency of our country. But now, it's almost like there is a competition to enthrone the worst of the thieves. Jews or Kalu was the one who was resident in some jail until some judicial abracadabra brought him out. He's still awaiting his trial if that trial would ever hold. But now, he's actually being named as a contender for the Senate presidency <laughs> of Nigeria. Akpabio, wasn't that the one that... Uh, um, Kayamo was busy prosecuting before he became the junior minister in the NDDC. In NDDC. Oh, wow. So now, here is the thing. Our situation, you might see me seeming to be laughing, but I'm weeping. I am weeping. I, I am weeping. I'm not weeping from the tear gas that stung our eyes when we were busy fighting for this nonsense we are calling democracy today mm. i'm weeping for all the young men and women who died to bet this thing we are calling democracy if indeed the dead could look back how would they be feeling right now when you are actually then what about all Jews or Carlos cellmates, the people who are in that jail with him? They are now seeing him. And then, oh, yeah, when I was in the U.S., I was told the tales of Nigerians who had become lost in Chicago and other places because they didn't have papers, drug convicts of all sorts, who are actually celebrating because now they can come back since one of them, one of their own. So I'm asking myself, how do we as a people, in good conscience, keep anyone in prison for stealing if we are enthroning the crooks? How? Exactly. Look, we seem to imagine that we live in some cocoon and the world cannot see us for what we are. I traveled to America in February 2010. It was in the, I think, the pant bomber was in December 20, 2009. So I traveled to America 2010 February and I went in through Houston. I was treated like a terrorist simply because for the first time in Nigerian history, one of us attempted suicide internationally. And it was so shocking for me because i was used to us being profiled as drug couriers yes. but to be profiled as a terrorist was a new experience but now the one who is saying he wants to be president they know what he is 
the whole world knows what he is. They know that is not his name. They know that's not his qualification that is parading. They know he didn't work in the places he claimed that he has worked at. They know that's not his real age. They know that everything about him from top to bottom is fake. That's on one hand. Then you have the Senate. It's a jostle for power amongst crooks. It's a race to the bottom of the pile. We've had um, an uptick in killings in recent times. And for example, like what happened in Plato State. Uh, I would like to ask you, I mean, as the don't, I mean, the twilight of this uh, administration comes uh, to bear. Uh, what's the specific step to uh, the security forces? What security forces? Let's let's be clear about something. Muhammadu Buhari, let me be very clear, is the one responsible directly for each and every one of the killings in Nigeria is the president that's on one hand but more importantly he is complicit in the killings he is complicit because he's the commander in chief of the armed forces how is it that armed men would operate in a community for hours and nobody would engage them how is it possible that ethnic militia are like better harmed than the police force. That they have resumed their killing. It should be no surprise to anyone. Nobody had engaged them. It wasn't like they were apprehended. They were simply on holiday. They were simply on holiday. And I am shocked when people in southern nigeria particularly imagine that these things are far away it's not people are already being picked off like chicken on lagos about the expressway if anyone imagine that any of these would disappear because we wish it to disappear they're lying to themselves these things are already with us and they'll be here for a while for as long as there is no political will to engage with the madness there are too many evidences of state complicity Commander Olawumi spoke I think it was about two years back and it was very clear about the list of terrorist sponsors in this government that have been handed to Muhammad Buhari what has he done about it absolutely nothing the UAE handed over a list of terrorist financiers in Nigeria. They prosecuted the ones within their own jurisdiction and sent them to jail. They're already in jail. What has the one in Nigeria done? Nothing. There are multiple evidences of state level complicity. The same security forces that put track in them, they can all the way to Kenya to go and illegally abduct him has no way of knowing where any terrorist financier in Nigeria is and we are talking about what can be done what can be done is obvious what has not been done is equally obvious who should be blamed is obvious the fact of the matter is that the Nigerians being slaughtered in Nigeria are victims of rulership ineptitude complicity failures and pure evil because these are preventable deaths the airwaves have been uh, washed with uh, recent uh, court remand in Shenkuti and um, police coming his home looking for exhibits uh, based on the his assault uh, of a police officer who has yet been need to be revealed by the Nigerian police force and there seems to be a, a calculated attempt to continually uh, hold, him. hold him uh, and yesterday a campaign was started to free Shion Kuti um, what are your thoughts on this? 
Thank you. By the time I came into the country, I think a couple of, yeah, a, a day before I came, I heard the news. By the time I came in, I heard more. And what I am saying very clearly, I'm going to address this from different angles. The first angle I would address it from is the idiocy of the victims. The victims in this case being the Nigerian people themselves. Idiocy of the victim in the sense that they are dividing themselves as to what to support, who to support. The truth is what you must always support. I have no knowledge of what transpired before what was filmed, but I am, I've had the benefit of hearing Sheung's explanation. And his explanation was that his car was run into from behind and his daughter was almost killed in that car. So there was sufficient provocation. Whether that might be said to justify what took place afterwards or not is another ball game entirely. So the police have a charge, assault on an officer. It took place on a bridge. My belief is that because he was not on the spot, they found themselves a basis for going to his house. But it should end there. This is purely a case of assault. That it has degenerated to Sheon being in detention for almost a week now is ludicrous in the extreme. To now be reading comments online <laughs> where some people are saying, oh, it's because he's not obedient, and some people are saying he's obedient, that is the division of the victims that I'm speaking to. The Nigerian police is not going to ask your political affiliation before it assaults you. So she won't slap the policeman. How many Nigerians are daily beaten, assaulted, harassed, injured, killed by police excesses? I'm not excusing anything that she might have done, but there is a need to deal with this humanely. And the people who are commenting on this should be careful. At the end of the day, Sheung is a Nigerian like them. He's got a wife, he's got kids. If he is dehumanized, it legitimizes the dehumanization of every other person. If we find a basis, any basis for that matter, to cheer on his ordeal, then it tells us about exactly how evil we are ourselves. So I think it is a time when Nigerians should first of all take a step back be clear that this is not politics and it should never be about politics it is about the commonalities of our afflictions as a people if they are doing this to Sheung, who has a name we've moved there are two episodes there there was what is on video that all of us are seeing and there is what is now following yoruba will say Ebua Loni town, Aboni Tanoi. if Sheung didn't do so well has the Nigerian police done better? Let me not aggravate the situation further, but I really think that the victims should find commonalities and stop dividing themselves and be talking about his obedience, his not obedience. It doesn't make any sense. Police is not going to ask what you are before he will shoot or kill or do whatever he's going to do. That's so guys, no doubt you enjoyed this session with Mr. Dele Faro Timi. He's somebody that speaks the truth to power. He doesn't care what people may think or the way they want to interpret it. He says it the way it is, you know, from the depths of his heart. And we all know that he made mention of Shen who was, you know, uh, harassing a policeman and later he was finally detained. Honestly, we must call his speed his speed. He went too far. No matter what the policeman did, I think he himself would have, you know, controlled himself and maybe report the policeman or take a legal action against the policeman if he felt the policeman wanted to maybe do anything wrong to his family. But I don't think assaulting a policeman on uniform is really a good thing. But so guys, apart from that option, we all know that Mr. Dele Faro to me is somebody that, you know, 
he speaks the truth to power he speaks the truth to power and i love the way he addresses issues you know you have heard him say that bola metinobu did not win this election you have heard him say that the judiciary shouldn't be an accomplice to this crime this uh stealing that they want to steal the people's mandate the judiciary has to come out clear they have to come out and stand with the nigerian people they have to defend our democracy they have to ensure that you know the rightful winner of this election is inaugurated or is allowed to sit on that seat so guys let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below please don't forget to subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell please give this video a like so that youtube can recommend it to others and let me know what you think in the comment section below thank you